Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Today's topic is going to be pain is nothing more than brain signaling. So I'll get to that in a minute. Let's uh, take a breath or two. It's going to be more indoor videos because it gets dark like a little bit before 5 o'clock now. Ridiculous with this daylight savings time. Not as much time during the day to shoot outside. I'll still make an effort, but I gotta kind of make a point to do it earlier. <sighs> Breathe in the peace. <sighs> Exhale the, the noise and the chaos. Breathe in the clarity. And exhale the doubt and the uncertainty. So, pain is nothing more than signals in the brain, brain signaling. So when we look at it that way, the body does not create the pain. The body sends a signal up to the brain. The brain has to interpret all of the available data. And then the brain makes a decision as to whether or not it converts that signal from the body into pain as a warning to get your attention to let you know something bad is happening. The purpose of pain. Been yawning all day. The purpose of pain is to protect us from something the brain thinks is dangerous and is going on. Pain is not a reliable indicator of the condition of the body. We can have pain without injury. We can have injury without pain. Pain without injury. Have you ever had a headache? No injury, just had a headache. You know, we've heard a lot of, you know, stress headaches. Well, that kind of makes sense. All right, but there's no injury. So for whatever reason, the brain is perceiving that strain, that stress, and perhaps the tension as a result of the stress as something dangerous and makes the head hurt a little bit, right? But the head doesn't create the pain. The, the subconscious brain inside the head does, based on all available data. So, you can have pain without injury. There's an old story about a construction worker in London or the UK somewhere, jumped off of some scaffolding and landed and couldn't move his foot, looks down and there's a nail going through his boot. And what does he do? He freaks out, screaming in pain. 10 out of 10 pain. Morphine couldn't touch it on the ambulance ride to the hospital. Uh, doctors are scrambling in the emergency room. They cut off his boot and come to find out it was between his toes. Right? He was not stabbed by the nail, but his brain looked down and perceived that he had a nail going through his foot. As a result, the brain made the decision to turn on 10 out of 10 pain. Once the doctors realized and stopped laughing uh, that he wasn't injured at all, what do you think this guy's brain did? Turned off the pain. So pain without injury, the minute he realized he was safe and his foot was okay, pain was gone. Brain signals based on what? The brain's perception of the available data and whether or not something bad or dangerous is going on. That's how it works. And there are plenty of stories of people who have injured themselves and they don't have pain. So there are soldiers, stories of soldiers on the battlefield. They get blown up, arms missing, legs in pieces, and they're on the chopper flying back to base camp. And uh, the medic is saying, hold on, I'm getting you the morphine. The soldier looks over and says, I don't, I don't need morphine. I don't need the morphine. I don't hurt which sounds ridiculous because he's missing an arm and his leg is in pieces. So there's injury without pain. But what's the brain doing? The brain is saying, I'm safe. I'm on the chopper going to the best military surgeons in the world. And this is my ticket home. I'm going to see my wife and kids. I'm going to get back to my family. And I'm out of this war zone. So to that gentleman's brain, he was safe. Therefore, the brain did not need the pain as a warning signal. He knew he was being taken care of, and he knew this was his ticket home. 
So pain is not a reliable indicator of the condition of the body. It is simply signals in the brain, and those signals in the brain are created based on the other available information and the brain's perception of danger. So for example, I've talked about this before, you touch a hot stove. What happens? Does the hand create the pain when you touch the stove? No, not at all. The hand does send a signal up through the nervous system, up the brain stem into the brain. The brain says, oh, touching metal, a little bit of warmth coming up. The hand doesn't create the pain. Neither does the heat, for that matter. It's the brain that needs to make the decision to go, oh no, you're touching metal, you're standing in front of a stove, the stove's been on for a while, and you're feeling some warmth, so the brain needs to decide, let me send the, the brain signal to say, get your hand off the stove, now. And so what does it do? It turns on pain. And I accidentally did that, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago. And even though I've used this story many, many times before coaching, uh, it surprised me how much it hurt when I touched the stove. But then I look at my finger and I wasn't burnt. And just as I've told in the story, the second my hand was off the stove, the danger was gone. The brain turned off the warning signal. So the brain signaling was, ouch, oh good, you're okay. On, off. So pain is nothing more than brain signaling circuits in the brain. So why do we get chronic pain? Well... Bad information, misinformation, and fear. And I say all the time that the two things that really are a recipe to take an instance of pain and make it chronic is fear and attention, right? So if you're fearful that something bad is going on, you're going to pay a lot of attention to it. But it doesn't necessarily mean anything more about the condition of your body then your brain perceived danger, turn on the pain, but then we get medicalized. We go to doctors, they might see something on the MRI, they might not. If they see something on the MRI and they point to it, yeah, that's the problem, now we all of a sudden be, become traumatized by that MRI process. Or the doctor who says, yeah, you're probably gonna have pain for a long while or for the rest of your life, and then we go to all sorts of treatments, invasive treatments sometimes, manipulation, injections, surgeries, and unfortunately, in many, many, many cases, those treatments don't work. So what ends up happening? The brain learns, I got a problem, and it's not fixable. So that perception of danger stays pretty constant. And sometimes it can flare. And other things like stress, life events, family events, financial stress, relationship stress... Uh, watching the news, who knows, any, any sort of things that the brain might interpret as, uh-oh, dangerous, can cause our symptoms to spike. And, you know, when we're feeling less endangered, you know, things can calm down. That's why sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when we're on vacation, we're not stressed out. Sometimes our symptoms can either settle down or go away. Now, it depends. Sometimes we go on vacation, we're so stressed out about whether or not the pain is going to ruin the vacation that the pain goes up. It's all based on the perception of danger. So, I really just wanted to go over some of these basic explanations about pain because the pain is nothing more than signals in the brain. It is not reflective of the condition of your body. I know it feels like it. And I know it seems pretty wild, but we are feeling it in that part of the body that the brain is misinterpreting the danger in. And so, the good news is, if the brain is misinterpreting bad data and turning on a warning signal cause pain with these brain signals, once we correct the data and let the brain know consistently, calmly, confidently, that my body's actually okay, the brain can make a different decision, turn the pain off, or turn it down. So that's the wonderful part of this whole mind-body, TMS, perceived danger pain, 
is because the brain's creating it. Your body's okay. Your body's not the issue in the vast, vast, vast majority of cases. And don't talk, talk yourself into believing, well, I'm the exception because I've got this and the doctor told me that. Most doctors don't understand all this stuff. They just don't. It's not taught in medical school. If you can't give a drug to it or operate on it, it doesn't exist in medical school, unfortunately. They don't teach the role of the brain and these brain signals and the warning si symptoms, uh, the warning signals uh, called pain. They don't teach that stuff in medical school. So the brain controls it all. And the, the key point I want to make is this is purely a subconsciously controlled process. You don't have the ability to just think and say, turn off and have it turn off. It's not within your conscious control. You can no more turn off your pain consciously by willing it to happen than I can make my hand hurt by saying, come on, hand, hurt. No matter how many times I've tried, I cannot create pain in my hand by trying to think my way into a, you know, hand, a hand that hurts. So it's all conscious or subconsciously controlled. And um, what we do is we influence the subconscious and this alarm system to turn off with accurate data, reliable information, consistently applied. And when the brain is sounding the warning signal, it's up to us. Really, it is up to us to consistently show up calmly and go, hey, brain, shh, it's okay. I know you're sounding the alarm, but there's really nothing bad going on. I'm okay. My body is fine. This is just TMS. This is brain. This is just you perceiving danger where none exists. It is a false alarm. These are just signals in the brain, right? So I really hope this clarifies for some people how this stuff works. And trust me, I know it feels physical. I know it does because I had 13 years of back pain and sciatica. And I know I would shift very uncontrollably, uncon uncomfortably, excuse me, uncomfortably driving to and from work. I, I would be shifting in this and that. I had so many times where I'd go out to eat with uh, my wife and son, and I would lay in the back seat on the way home. Like, the pain is real. The danger is not. These are just brain signals, and it's our job to use our conscious thinking brain to teach and show our subconscious that we're okay. If you want the brain to calm down the nervous system and the pain system, the best way to do that is to actually be calm. Freak out, never got anybody better. Uh, all that does is scream at the brain, stay on alert, we're in trouble. So freak out less. Calmly reassure, ideally get to the point where you can go, eh, I don't care, it's just brain signals. I know it's uncomfortable, but it's not damaging. It's not harmful. So I'm going to wrap this one up here. Love you guys and gals. You're awesome. Love all the feedback. And uh, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.